personal finance practice problem using OneNote. Online life insurance calculators. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in OneNote. Up above, we have some links to some life insurance calculators online, but you can also, of course, just type into your favorite browser, life insurance calculator, and you will find a bunch of them. Down below, we're gonna have some information that we will use to populate some of the life insurance calculators to practice with them. In future presentations, we'll be doing some calculations in Excel, noting that like with the loan calculators, I think the online calculators are a great tool to get an understanding of the kinds of calculations that should be made and then do your own calculation in Excel because that gives you a better grasp of what is actually happening as you actually work through the calculations. You can also customize Excel much better to fit your particular needs and the types of calculations you think are appropriate to you. You can also use, of course, the Excel to then uh, be part of a, a, a larger kind of budgeting strategy tax planning strategy, retirement strategy, risk management strategy, for example. So let's go on to uh, good old Google here. Here's a couple life insurance calculators. We'll just take a look at a few of them. So this one, I'm not promoting any of these. This is just a Google search and we found some life insurance calculators that we will use and take a look at the kind of functions and the features that they're focusing in on. So how much money uh, will be needed for burial expenses? So this is something, of course, that we're thinking about, OK, what are going to be the costs that they're going to have to take care of for the for the burial expenses? And we can kind of arrange that uh, multiple different ways. But here we have the average costs range from eight thousand to more than ten thousand. So we've got the eight thousand populated for us. If I look at my data over here, we call it, we said eight thousand four hundred. So let's say eight thousand four hundred on this one. And so next we've got how many years of income will you need to cover? Now, obviously that's gonna be somewhat subjective because that could differ. That's gonna be one of the key questions. What it could, you might depend it, say for example, on how young children are and how long the children are going to be till they reach 18 and then possibly have college that you can kind of add on top of that. Or you might choose kind of a generic answer. You might say, well, I think that it takes about seven to 10 years, for example, for people to get used to to the, to the new circumstances for example uh, so you might just use a generic like 10 years you might think about how long you are out to retirement how long your working years are so there's many different ways you can consider this they have here base your answer by considering how long your family would need your income to make ends meet if you were to die that's kind of again it's kind of hard to say there's a couple different ways you can kind of think about that for example would your income need to be replaced until your children finish education or until your spouse gets retires uh, gets a job or dies so these are the considerations a lot of times people use like 10 or 7 for example as just basically an average of of an average year so that would be like the simple calculation in any case we'll keep it at uh, 10 for this one how much annual net income will your survivors need again that's kind of a tough tough one to say you might say that it would be your full income that you're making right now because you're no longer making that but you might also say but if i'm dead then at least they don't have the cost of me consuming that amount of income so you might take like some percentage of that income that would be needed your questions would be do i want to have the income that would be there to have the same cost of living do i want to have the income minus me <laughs> that would be there do, and so you can have multiple different ways you can kind of answer that question but the baseline would be maybe you could say well if the spouse that is dying had income of seventy three thousand, and i want to keep it at the 73 i'm just going to put seventy three thousand here so let's say seventy three thousand and uh, how, how much money do you have in savings and investment? It's because the savings and investment, we're really looking at if you're kind of self-insured, meaning if you have money in the savings and investments uh, over the liabilities, then obviously you have some, some money that's gonna be useful. If you have a lot of debt that's gonna be out there, then, then uh, that's gonna be you know, more of a problem at uh, if you were to die. So let's pull out the trustee calculator and let's say that we've got in the savings and investing, let's say we've got the 16,400 plus the emergency fund 19,5. And then the IRA, you've got to think, do I want to add the IRA or not? Because I can't really get to that until, in, until I was in retirement, for example, but it's going to kick in at some point. Let's add it. Let's add it here. Let's be 25,4. And so that's going to be the 61,3, 61,3. 
So let's put that here back in my calculator. 61.3. And do you have any children? So we're going to say children, of course, will affect the calculation. I think we said we had five children here, five kids. That's going to have an impact. So we've got five kids on that one. And then uh, the age uh, age of the children. So we could say how old are they? I don't think I have that much detail in terms of how old they are, but that would be often a useful calculation because one of the methods you'd see how long you're going to need the money is to determine how, how long the youngest kid will get to reach adulthood 18 at least to be on their own. It might be further than that these days to, for someone to be able to take care of themselves. Let's just say, let's say two, five, five, eight and nine I, I don't know so how much how much is needed for future college expenses per child so that would be an added cost we can tack on with the college expenses that we can kind of aim for and we can kind of figure out what the college expenses are and try to shoot for that i'm not going to put any right here they're on their own right now i'm, I'm going for the baseline so are there any one-time expenses you wish to fund so there might be other kind of one-time costs that we might be uh, looking for that we can add in as kind of a, an aim. Let's say no and let's do a calculation. See recommendations based on your inputs. It appears that the appro that the approximate amount life insurance is six of thirty three three seventy five sixteen. Uh, here's why we consider each of your answers and weight each based on the experience of our experts based upon your projected financial needs and the periods in time when that money would be needed. We have determined the approximate amount of life insurance you need today to compute the return on your investment between now and when uh, you uh, indicated the money would be needed. Uh, we've assumed a 2.5 return for horizons of five years and less and 4% return for horizons of 10 years and a 6%. These returns were then adjusted. So find more insurance information. So they don't give us too much of a breakdown, but there's their calculation. Let's try this one. This is life insurance calculator. So a Northwestern mutual. Let's see what they've got here. So first tell us a bit about your family. So we've got options. Just me, me and my partner, me and my kids, me, my partner and my kids. So we're going to say married couple, partner, kids. Next, it's helpful for us to know where you live too. Do I really have to 90210? I'm in Beverly Hills. Is that how you 90210 Beverly Hills? I'm just making this up. So your gender could also be a factor. So we'll just say I'm male here. Just not to confuse anyone with my voice and whatnot. So, we're, so that's so, and then well, that's because so your age also makes a difference. You just need to know everything. Okay, let's just say 35. I'm making this up. I'm not really 35. So your partner's age matters. This helps. Let's say the partner is 34. Okay. And then how many kids do you have? We've got the five kids, we said five kids. So how old is your youngest? So they often ask for the youngest because they're the one that uh, that that might be, we're going to say two that you might be saying needs to get to 18. That's what we got to be paying. We got to be paying in at least till that youngest kid can fend for themselves. Your annual income is important factor so we can figure out how much your family needs are, okay, how much so how much so so we can figure out how much your family will need to keep up so your annual income i think they just want my income and not my spouse's so i think i'm gonna put there we said that according to our practice problem we got the gross income we're saying of seventy three thousand let's use that seventy three thousand seventy three thousand per year so we figure, and this is a little ambiguous because I can't really tell if they want my income as the person being insured or the family income. So I'm going to keep it at the 73. Your partner, oh, there we go. Now we got the partner's annual income. Okay, partner's making 49,000 gross. So we'll put the 49,000. This one looks a little bit more detailed. It's taken into more factors at least. Actually, they, they're probably just selling my information. It's fake. So you, you guys can steal my information if you want, whatever, because it's not even real. So this lets you know how much your family will need for things like rent, groceries, 
So what are your monthly expenses? So we're getting into the full budget here. Monthly expenses, let's scroll down and say, okay, should I include the mortgage payment? As I'm not sure if they want like a cash flow basis or like an accrual basis because like the mortgage isn't really an expense, but I'm saying, I'm thinking they want cash flow. So I'm gonna say 1285 plus 440 plus 240 plus 180 plus, actually, is that monthly? These are monthly, right? Okay, let's do it again. One, two, eight, five, plus four, four, oh, plus two, four, oh, plus one, eight, oh, plus five, two, oh, plus two, nine, five, plus two, nine, five, plus two, nine, three, plus one, four, five. Hopefully that adds up. I'm not gonna double check it. I'm just gonna say it's three, six, nine, three. If I messed up on my calculation, I didn't mess up. I know what I'm, I'm, I'm calculating wizard. Select the amount. Let's tell us how much your family will need. Let's just bring it up to four round it up to four thousand four thousand do you have a mortgage yes i do so do you have a mortgage your estimate so far do you have them is that much whoo that got higher okay i've got a mortgage how much do you have left on your mortgage okay let me see my liability my mortgage how much do I have on my mortgage? 150,000. 150. The range one to two. We'll go with that. Boom. Do you have any other debts? Things like credit cards, probably. I've got like a credit card and loan that adds up to, we're gonna say 3900 plus 7400, 11.3 on my other debts that I have, if you really have to know, Mr. Nosy, less than 50,000, we're gonna say, okay. How much other assets, how much do your, do your assets add up? Okay, do I include the home on there? We're talking liquid and non-liquid assets. We're gonna say my assets are right here. I'll say I got a checking account, 2900 plus 16400 plus 19500 plus 254 plus the 11.9 on the car, 19.4 on the car, two, 200,000 on the home, 295.5, we'll say, 295.5. So let's say I've got 200 to 300 on the asset side of things. So this thing's like your, your retirement and bank accounts, other investments and valuables. What about the house? How much do your assets add up to? They don't say the house. I, I'm assuming the house is in there. Anyways, they get to your estimate. Great, based on what we told, here's how, how much coverage you'll need. So 820, so obviously they had a much more in-depth amount of data that I had to put in there, but not too much information on how they got to that number, right? But there's their calculus, so we can say, oh, okay, I'm just gonna have faith in that number because I gave them a lot of stuff, but they didn't tell me how they really got there. So to place your income, to pay for college. So here's your income. Okay, let's try this one. Let's try another one. Life insurance needs calculator. Answer a simple question to estimate amount of life insurance. So think about how much money your family will need to cover daily expenses. This is typically 60 to 80% of your individual post-tax income. So now we're looking at kind of the baseline, uh, how much, and oftentimes we say, hey, here's how much I make but really I'm looking at to try to figure out how much we're gonna need to cover the expenses, especially if you're dead, it might mean that you have, are less of an expense, you're not eating anything, right? So it's gonna be 70%, 60 to 80% possibly. Don't include college savings, children, or any debts that, that you would like to pay off immediately, such as mortgage, since those uh, are covered in other questions. So think about how much money your family will need to cover daily living expenses. Uh, this is this is typically 80% of your post tax income. So you might say, okay, I could do that a couple different ways. I can try to, I can try to add up my my expenses here, and I think they said not to include the mortgage, or I can try to just take my income level, and they wanted post tax income, but let's just say my income level is here. They might be saying post tax after the withholdings. So you might try to take like your net income maybe, but I'll take. A percentage of the gross income. So they said 49,000, 73,000 for the two incomes. We're at 122,000. You could look at the tax return for that. 
and then let's say they said set 60 to whatever percent let's say times 60 percent of that would be the the well, let's take 70 percent 49,000 plus 73,000 times 70 percent because you don't need the whole thing because we're just looking at the mandatory stuff and, and I'll be dead so I won't be eating anything 85 400 so we'll go with that next how many years should income be provided after you're gone think about how long you'll need additional income to support your family so if so again this is tough to call because you might just use an average like seven to ten just to, just like just a, a number that's often used or you might try to figure out how long your youngest child will be on their own for example is another common way or how many years you had left in your working years you might try to do that or how many years your spouse would have to work till retirement or something like that we'll just use the generic 10 10 years next uh, how much debt would you like to pay off immediately consider things like outstanding mortgage private student loans credit card balances so it would be nice if you could just wipe out the mortgage here which we had at the 150,000 plus the 3900 on the credit card 7400 if you could just take care of those 1613 i think they would be fairly well off i'd be better off dead if they could do that in any case this is going to be 1613 and say next how much would you like to provide for children consider how much it would cost for child care services in your area and how long you'll need them uh, if you're staying at home you'll likely need to pay for child care services if you are no longer around to watch your children keep uh, in mind that child care needs can change so i think i had a child care thing so now they're asking for child care no one else did that i'd say the nanny fee 1400 let's say 1000 how much child care is this per year or per month child doesn't seem let's say 1400 maybe need an annualize that how many children require college funding i'm not gonna they're not they're on their own for college if i'm dead how much would you like to set aside for an emergency fund so an emergency fund so we might want like six months of our current earnings maybe or something like that as an average often used so let's say that we came out with our let's say we came out with our our income i said was forty nine thousand divided by or plus seventy three thousand times 0. 0.7 i think we did and let's say we just take half of that six months 42 7 let's say 42 7 42 7 so notice the different questions being asked here <laughs> how much personal life insurance do you already have i'm going to say zero that's why i'm here people so then we got the income replacement we've got the debt payoff the child care the college fund emergency fund burial costs they put twenty thousand. really just put me in a coffee can and throw me in the ocean for crying out a million is that so again we're getting obviously different calculations let's try this one so how how much annual income would your dependents need again that's an arbitrary question you could say okay well this is how much i'm making right now and maybe i could start there or maybe i take some percentage of it like 70 percent of it or something like that but if i'm the one dying that's my income seventy-three thousand. that would be the high level you would think you also might say well it should be higher because you might make more money in the future and there's like inflation or something but we'll go with that how long but i'll be, so in any case how long would your dependents need financial support again arbitrary question is are you saying how long the kids until they're 18 or 21 or 24 or 40 however long it takes for kids to be dependent these days let's just say or you could just use a random number like 10 or how long my working years would be if i was alive or something like that we'll say 10 as a random number so let's calculate your life insurance needs how much debt do you need to pay off so again we could say okay my debt i've got debt of the mortgage 150,000 credit card 3974 car loans 1613 you take care of that and you can just freaking kill me right now and every the world would be a better place this is going to be 1613 so if you want to help with the cost of college tuition we're not doing that because we haven't been how how much do you want to add for burial so my burial costs were 8400 
So eight four. Okay. And then how how much savings do you have? On the savings, I'll tell you how much I have right now. Let's just go with the savings. 164, 195. Do I add the IRA or not? I'll, I'll add it 254 because I added it last time because it's kind of locked in under the IRA. But whatever, we're going to add that in my savings 613. So if you already have life insurance, I don't have any life insurance yet. So that very quick questionnaire here from from these from Forbes. So fairly quick calculate how much savings do you have? So and so they come out to the 838. So notice all these calculations are totally different, right? And that's kind of part of the issue. So let's go to the next one. Edward Jones, what do they have to say? I think this one's a little bit more in depth. We've got the mortgage. So what was my mortgage at again? My mortgage was 150,000. So we'll say 150,000. My other debt came out to be my other debt I had I'll tell you my other debt. I had 39 credit card 74 on the car loans 113 113 Man, real estate real estate I had I got my homes worth uh 200,000 200,000 is my home value 200,000 auto between is, are you telling me what the asset of my car is i think that's what they want my cars i have two cars currently valued at 11 9 and 19 4 31 3 on the cars 31 3 other liabilities that's it because they're all loans i already gave you all the liabilities so we'll keep it at that and uh, what what income do you want replaced? How much would your family need for an ongoing living expense if they could no longer rely on your income? Again, I don't really know, but I'm making I'm making seventy three thousand. So let's just keep it at that. I could say, well, I'm dead, so it should be less than that. Or I might say there's going to be inflation. And I would make more money in the future, so maybe it should be more than that, or whatever. So you can have multiple assumptions, but I'll say seventy three thousand and keep it at that years how many years again a very arbitrary number do i want do I, am i basing it on my youngest kid how long they're going to be until they're independent by age you know 42 or do i need uh just 10 as a random year that's what we've been doing what funeral costs final expenses we, we estimated ours to be eight thousand four eight thousand four eight four other expenses do i have other expenses what final expenses do you have? What other, ex you mean all my normal expenses? These are the final expenses. If you need starting point, we recommend 15,000. That's ridiculous. Just put me in a modest receptacle and f whatever. So what are family education needs? So I'm not gonna do the education one because I haven't before. Would you like to leave something for your heirs uh, or charity? No. What assets would be available for family? This could include any additional assets that were not captured by other inputs. So current life insurance, business, real estate, cash, other investments. Do I have other investments here? I put these already in. So maybe, maybe I should have put the IRA here instead of up here, but no, I'll keep it as it is. Assumptions. Inflation rate recommended 3%. Inflation's getting ridiculous right now, but we'll keep your 3%, even though the Fed is out of control. Income tax rate, state and federal. Uh, let's, let's just say, let's say 30. And you can get that on your tax return. It might be the average rate you're looking for. Rate, uh, uh, rate of return. This is the rate of return your loved ones would expect to receive if they invest their life insurance proceeds. Let's say they're going to get 5%. 4 to 5 is a pretty modest rate of return. They're recommending 6. I'm going with 5. Whatever. And so other liabilities. You need something there? Let's put a 0. I don't have any other liabilities. Other expenses. 0. These are required fields. Negative 1. Okay. Negative 1. If that's the way you want to play it. 0. Current life insurance, zero. 
business zero, zero, negative one. Okay, whatever. Calculate it. Why, why is it doing this? Let's put one, one, between zero and one nine nine, zero. All right, it's a little finicky this one, but it's coming out to total life needs this amount, coverage shortfall this amount. Total life needs is here, so I think this is the shortfall that they're calculating. So again, you can see expanded details. Let's check out their details. So they're saying income replacement, final expenses, education, le leg legacy, rate of return, inflation, current life, and so on to get to this shortfall. Congratulations taking for Okay, so you can see all of these calculations are kind of using different factors and variables because there's a lot of estimates that are going to go involved in it so they're useful tools to kind of get to see if you're in the in the ballpark but you probably want to use a few of them and then you might want to be taking the techniques that they're using and possibly apply them to an excel formula so you can actually do your own calculation have an understanding of it and then and so we'll do a couple kind of formats of calculations in future presentations just to get some ideas around them